Hey guys, it's Penelope in London, and I'm going to show you this. And um, what you're seeing now is astro.com. So you can see here www.astro.com. So when I'm reading charts, and um, this is my chart, and what you have is a snapshot of the heavens of your chart on the inner will. I'm just getting my marker here so you can see. So the inner will is the natal placements of your chart and they define very much where you're at. So what we have in evolutionary astrology, we would look at Pluto. So I'm just gonna run through that, but I'm gonna show you solar fire. And then I'm gonna show you something else that's going on in society that's affecting us in quite a big way at this moment. And um, it's an article to do with Carl Gustav Jung, and it's to do with narcissism in society at this time that I want to touch um, on at the moment, because I think that the suffering that we're going through, each of us, and the lack of empathy that's out there is huge. And we don't know quite how to deal with it, but we each have a place in healing that part in us. But I'm going to explain how this sort of works on a shadow um, on the shadow side and um, with on a chart. So we would have Pluto, and Pluto is going to define what's unconscious in us, and that would mean that Pluto, wherever it's transiting, it takes 240 years to go around the chart. It would mean that that part of our lives is in for a big overhaul, and it would mean that it's unconscious and that it's going to be brought to the surface through different types of events and um, outer events and inner feelings and events that also go back to our early imprints and possibly past lives if we believe in that. So I'm going to show you now that Pluto, I'm a ninth house Pluto with Pluto and Uranus and Isis up there on the on my MC, which is my public role in the world. So this would be partly why I am using social media and doing this and showing you as part of my life path and um, talking about the deeper stuff you know I don't go for the light stuff I'm not um, into and also I've got Scorpio rising which is to do with psychology and going into the depth and Scorpio rising can also show where there's been you know abuses in you know in our early life as well I mean, many people have it, but to varying different degrees. Everybody has a form of PTSD, complex PTSD. So we all experience trauma and we then move through our lives and we try and heal um, through events and recreation of circumstances and meeting similar types of people that maybe were the same types as our parental care or early life. It doesn't have to be our parents. It could be you know, other family members or early educational stuff where we were thwarted and we will tend to play out the imprint through life. Then what we have, so we could, in a way, we could say that Pluto is part of the shadow because it's unconscious, it's underlying stuff. And then we've got um, Lilith and in astrology, we have Black Moon Mean Lilith, and mine is at five degrees of Pisces. Then we have True Lilith, which mine is at 23 of Aquarius. And then we have the Lilith Asteroid, which I have here at four degrees of Leo in my eighth house. So we can see this is my third house. And the third house is to do with communication and the way I would use my words and um, also short distance travel and um, very much right brain, left brain stuff, you know, the analytical, the use of words and such. And then the eighth house is to do with where we merge and where we merge our resources, but also to do with stuff that's taboo. It's to do with um, life, death and rebirth. The ruler of the eighth house is actually Pluto and the ruler of the third house is Gemini. So depending though, you know, it does, even though that my third house is Aquarius, you can see that I've got a, um, this is the cusp, my third house is Aquarius. So this actually also would make me very Uranian in my thinking and, you know, come out with things that might seem quite odd to other people. And um, because 
Um, Uranus is very shocking, can be shocking in its um, delivery and in our own lives. And but it's also can be genius. I'm not saying that about myself, but I'm just giving you an idea. And then we have um, my cusp of my eighth house is the sign of cancer. So this is where I need to, you know, there's a sensitivity about me there to do with my merging as well. And then we would look at rulers. So the ruler of, you know, my third house is Uranus. And where is Uranus? Uranus is up here on my MC. And then we would look at the ruler of my eighth house, which is my moon, because the moon rules the my eighth house. So there's a lot to integrate on a chart. It's um, very complex and very beautiful work. It's symbols. Carl Gustav Jung used it. He started looking at astrology in 1911 when he was about 36 years old. So if we look then, where has Pluto moved since my birth? So on the note that it takes 240 odd years to move around the chart, we've got Pluto up here on my MC. And Pluto has, is currently, it's um, in 26 degrees of um, Capricorn. That's for the whole of humanity that Pluto is going to be leaving Capricorn um, in finally in 2024. And it's been in Capricorn since 2008. So it's spent 20 years um, here. So actually go 2024 minus 2008. That would have been 16 years. It would have been in the sign of of Capricorn, then it will move into Aquarius and it will be there for 20 years from 2024 to 2044. So, and we're going into a whole new period of time. So what we're seeing play out right now is evolution in action. We're continuously evolving, but because really, if we look at the lifespan of a human being, let's say we live 80 years, it's not a huge period of time. You know, it's a small period of time. It may seem huge to us, but in the context of the bigger picture, it's a very short period of time. If we go back 500 years, you know, we've had five different generations of, or six, seven different generations of people or more, because people used to live shorter um, lifespans, you know, if we go back 100 years and 200 years and whatever. So what I want to show you then is my Lilith at the moment today is that um, I've got in transit, I've got Lilith, um, this is Lilith mean, um, sorry, Lilith asteroid is about to hit my Lilith mean, so the asteroid, so this, and Mercury is also on my Lilith as well, my Lilith and mean, and this is where I'm resolving my own shadow at the moment, and then Lilith, um, the asteroid, um, this is also, in, in fact, it's square to my sun here. The asteroid is squaring my sun. So there's a lot of tension in me at the moment around expressing myself and a lot of feelings I've had with regard to, you know, some news last week where a young woman was murdered. That's big, you know, news in the United Kingdom, um, you know, by a so-called authority figure, somebody in the police force, for instance. So there's a lot in me right now. And also I'm looking at um, my past um, because I'm going through some history of records um, to do with my own history as a child and looking at certain birth certificates and things that need to be pulled up and court cases and such. So, you know, the, my feelings right now are, are very, um, they're very inward looking and really looking at my shadow because I'm transforming something in myself and so what I'm feeling ultimately can be seen on the chart it's not that the chart is doing anything to me but my feelings are in alignment with this chart so if I then go to share solar fire with you um, which I'm going to do now and this is what I work with when I work with people's charts so this is the same chart but it's from the perspective of solar fire we got the sorry from the perspective of this is solar fire and we just looked at astro.com which you can get a a copy of if you go to that website but you do need your time of birth so when we look at my chart here we have the element of that we can see better that asteroid lilith is just approaching my true sorry mean black moon Lilith and also I've got Mercury on top so there's something going on for me where I need to clear the air and also because this asteroid is squaring my sun at zero degrees of Gemini and it's also squaring my 
ascendant in Scorpio there's and there's a lot that's playing out for me now in my internal world so sometimes the things generally what happens to us it's not really the external world that's having the greatest effect on us it's our internal world it's our dream state our sleep state it's our moments alone when nobody's around us that we can have the biggest growth because a lot of our issues and problems that we have they may feel very real but a lot of them are playing out that we're jumping back to the past we're being reminded in dream state of um, memories we're coming into contact with people that trigger us and the triggers will bring up um, our what's going on for us you know now somebody may trigger us but it will flip us back to the past or it will bring us fear about the future so we're very internal in our interactions. So let me show you. I'm going to go a couple of days ahead. So you see this is the 19th here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five days. And on the 24th of March, um, I've got the asteroid Lilith is at only at two degrees. So let's go ahead again. One, two, three, four, five and then it's at four degrees on the 29th of March. And then the conjunction for me of asteroid Lilith on my black moon mean Lilith, which is both to do with the shadow, there's to do with resolution, um, and it will still be squaring my sun. And it will, it's basically working through to help me evolve something. Now this Jupiter, which is to do with our faith and our belief, and it can go into grandiosity if we use it in the incorrect way. But if we use it in the correct way, the level would be that it would help enlighten me and bring faith back into my life. This is actually landing on my true Lilith. So I've got a lot of activity on my feminine right now of feeling stuff where I've been slighted, where I've not been treated with grace and maybe looking also how I treat other people and how I allow people to affect me and how I'm affected by you know, the news and what goes on around outside me. So we're all having this type of symbolism going on, on in our chart, but we each have an individual chart because the inner will is gonna be different for all of us. And that's gonna be because of the rising sign as well. So, you know, this is, that rising sign is to do with my time of birth. So if you had a different rising sign, then this Lilith is gonna be falling, the asteroid is gonna be falling in, in Pisces in a different house for you. And it may not be conjuncting a planet or it may be not touching other planets, but this, for me, the, this asteroid is speaking to my mean black moon Lilith. And it's also speaking to my son, and it's also speaking to my, um, up here, it's speaking to my, you know, Scorpio ascendant. So this is deep, deep work that's going on for me. But thankfully, because I've spent many years now looking at the work of Carl Gustav Jung, and I've also been looking at evolutionary astrology, I've been able to, uh, you know, work with myself. And it's a form of psychoanalysis. This is what astrology is when we're looking at all of these symbolisms. And it would have been one of the oldest tools of humanity. It would have been pre-Plato, pre-Christ, pre-Plato, and it, it's a very old way of looking at our psychology, okay? And later we would have had Jung in, uh, and Freud in 1850, Jung in 1875, and I think William James also in the America, and Jung and Freud would have been in Europe, and there are others. Um, you know, Plato is a brilliant um, um, teacher um, as well to read, and also we have Dante, who's another brilliant um writer as well and um, so there are many books and you know Dante his book um you know it's 700 years old and it speaks of today you know purgatory and you know climbing to higher levels in our being so astrology is a beautiful archetypal system that can help us to evolve our own nonsense this is my view now with that Pluto when we look at Pluto, if you want to look at Pluto in your own chart with me, we can do this and um, with the other outer planets. But Pluto for me, um, in the second house, it's going to be there. I'm going to show you by years. 
because although it's going to move into Aquarius, my Aquarius ends at the 12 degrees, my Aquarius begins at 12 degrees of the sign of, you know, here, so you can see that it's 12 degrees. And so if I go ahead by years, you're going to see that in 2024, that you're going to see this change to the sign of Aquarius, um, Pluto. So watch this, one, two, three, there you go. It's gone in and then it comes out. It goes, it will go back into, oh, that's 2025. There you go, 2024. So that's going to be one degree, 30th of March, 2024. We are then into Pluto being in Aquarius, um, which is going to be a whole new way of being for all of us. Then we're going to go ahead. We're going to go another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Pluto is going to be in my second house until um, 2031. And now if I take this back by um, weeks, we're going to go one, two, three. There you go. So really, this is going to change for me in the first week of March 2031. Pluto will move from my second house into my third house. And we can take into account how long has then, if we go back by years, how long has Pluto been in my second house? So watch Pluto here. We're gonna take it back to this point here. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's go back, there you go. We're going back to, we're going back to 2009, okay? So we can see then, if we go weeks, one, two, three, four, five, let's get that moving. Because I want it to go four degrees, and we keep pushing that through, there you go, and then it goes in. So it's been in there for me since um, 2010, and it's going to leave my second house in 2031 so th at that point if we go 2031 minus 2010 it's been there for me for 21 years okay um so what does this mean trauma and the second house um we look at the emotional trauma of pluto pluto is not all about emotional trauma but this is the idea of what it is um Basically, it's a forcing these individuals. So if you've got Pluto in the second house, it's a forcing these individuals to evaluate their value system and how these value systems define their sense of individual identity and meaning. It will create cyclical forced situations which causes a revaluation of the meaning of the values and it helps these people discover deeper levels of resources within themselves and that creates new or refined values that allows them to relate differently to themselves and others. So I've been learning, you know, through this period since 2000 and probably retrograded. So 2010, I've been learning to reevaluate my value systems, which I've been doing quite dramatically, like extremely dramatically. Um, this will to survive is strong with the, this in the second house, and it can create intense emotional trauma, and or intense emotional trauma can occur, um, so that the individual um, can carry on and survives. You know, not to not become weakened, and it's a survival instinct is very strong with it in the second house because the second house is also Taurus, although my second house is Capricorn. The natural astrology is Taurus, which is about values, needs, and our inner needs. So basically, it's about a deepening of an inner awareness so that new values and ways of relating can emerge. And what we've got to watch out for here is the will to dominate another, because otherwise it will be met with equally or stronger wills that have the effect of generating intense confrontation. So confrontation is part of life. You know, we can't get out of that. But the more we know ourselves, then the more we are able to, you know, guide ourselves in a better way. For instance, you know, there are many ways of crossing the same road. We can cross the road at the traffic lights. We can cross the road in the middle of the road with oncoming traffic. Or we can stand at the side of the road, wait for the traffic to pass, and then cross in an orderly fashion that gets us safely to the other side. But, you know, there will always be elements that we are not going to be able to predict. And this is part of being human. 
but we do have free will to a great degree. So now what I'm going to do, which is really important for us to understand in an article I'll put below this video as well, is that I'm going to share um, an article here, um, and it's the Union Center for Spiritual Sciences, and this is Jung and others on narcissism. And what I, the bit I wanted to read here, which was not the definition of narcissism, but it's very important because a lot of people are throwing around that word without understanding what it actually is. So maybe you'd like to stop the video and read that and then read also what the features of narcissism are. And um, these are nine um, mentioned here. Um, we've got grandiosity and fantasies of unlimited power, seeing oneself as special. Now, the interesting thing is here that the word empath can be seen as, you know, I'm special, I'm an empath. I don't call myself that. I sort of feel st strongly against that word and other words that come up in spiritual terms as well. Um, there can be lacking in empathy. There can be appearing arrogant and inflated. And also there are other things here. So narcissism is is really, you know, an idea that, that somebody's saying high self-esteem, which is not absolutely correct, but it can be that one can have be appear to be narcissistic and not be narcissistic, but just have high self-esteem. So we need to dig into this subject at a very deep level. And also, you know, um, there can be a lack of empathy. And so here is um that freud actually thought that um, some going back in time that you know some there's healthy narcissism to a point which is very um somebody said to me the other day it's an oxymoron that word as well so we want to watch out for that because it's about you know love loving ourselves um to a point but this is something i'd like to look at that i posted earlier narcissism is just physical vanity fact so look at this the key word here is just the just here. Narcissism includes um, narcissism includes far more than vanity. It can be materialism, entitlement, aggression, when insulted, and a lack of interest in emotional closeness. So we can see this is playing out in society in a really heavy way at this time. This, you know, materialism, entitlement, aggression. So many of us have narcissistic tendencies but we do have levels of empathy, which can sort of mean that we're not fully blown in narcissism. Um, but again, we need to study this word and I'm gonna be doing more work on that. There's a brilliant man um, on social media called, on YouTube called Sam Vaknin, V-A-K-K-N-I-N, V-A-K-N-I-N, who's a scholar on the subject. And it also says here, why is it significant for us to know about? And for both personal and collective reasons, we need to be aware of narcissism and the narcissism, narcissism epidemic. On a personal level, it is very likely that we see and or deal with narcissism in, a, in our daily life, social media, advertising, really, you know, reality shows on television and among friends and family. Given the popularity and seeming um, ubiquity these days of the cell phone many of younger the younger generation and it's not just the younger generation but it means that we're manifesting these traits more so now than ever you know with the selfies and the so you know so many different ways that we're doing this um that you know it's not pointing the finger at anyone and actually when we point a finger we've always got three pointing back at us so this is about doing the shadow work and this is part of evolutionary astrology as well um, and this is another reason I'm showing you this, because we do have um, something a gentleman called Paul Levy wrote a book, um, a friend of mine, Michaela, introduced me to it, um, who's also an evolutionary astrologer. She, um, in part, also introduced me to the idea of Wetiko, um, which is to do with selfishness in society. So we can think we're not and we're going around not being empathetic with people that we're supposedly saying that we love and we think we've got unconditional love and we, you know, build ourselves up to believe these things that, and we're not actually showing it. So we live in very interesting times where we actually lie to ourselves on a daily, you know, hourly, moment by moment basis of who we think we are. And it's the shadow. And this is what we've got to really get to grips with in society. Reading on. Um, he, 
it's also said here that, you know, we've got the TV shows, The Apprentice, The Survivor, The Real World, San Francisco, um, have presented narcissistic characters. YouTube and MTV also present uh, us with narcissistic images. And why does this matter? Question mark. Because many people, especially young people, take their cues and their values from such programs in the absence of parental guidance and adult modeling of non-narcissistic behavior. And Jung would remind us that narcissism is pathology, i.e. a disease, a form of illness that compromises the quality of life. It is not something to which we should aspire, but rather is a phenomenon that we should condemn. So we really need to look at this. And this is why I'm bringing this into the astrology. So this web page is beautiful. Um, Jungian Center for the Spiritual Sciences. I'll put the link below the video. And any comments on this, I'd be grateful for your feedback. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.